of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and the Lord be with you. You're very welcome here to the Church of the Assumption here in Slivru as we gather to offer up these prayers before our Requiem Mass, the happy repose of the soul of Pat Phelan. We're just going to begin by placing two Christian symbols on his coffin. First of all, the Bible. Uh, Father Brian Griffin will place the Bible on his coffin for us here today. In life, Pat cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. And of course, the crucifix, one of our great Christian symbols, a reminder to us not of death or of dying or of ending, but always a symbol of resurrection, of new life and of victory. A victory that we believe that Pat, being the man of faith he was, now shares in. In baptism, Pat received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather Pat to himself. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who open your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant Pat, whom you have called out of this world. Lead him to your kingdom of light and peace and count him among the saints in glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. I invite you to be seated for a few moments, and our requiem mass for Pat will begin in just a few moments' time.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you. I invite you to be seated for a few moments. Again, I welcome you all here to Slivru today as we gather with the Feel and family to offer up this Requiem Mass for the happy repose of the soul of Pat. And we gather to remember him, to celebrate him, to give thanks to God for his long life and all of the blessings that he received throughout his life. But we also gather to pray for him, that the Lord will grant to him now a place of rest and peace with him in his presence forever. Thank you for your presence. I know the family very much appreciate your support for them at this time. Welcome to Mike and Celebrant, uh, Father Brian Griffin, a native of the parish here, of course, in uh, Sleeve Row. Pat was a man of faith, trusted, who believed, we're going to bring up two symbols now. Lupita is going to bring up his Benemerente medal, uh, which he received, uh, symbolizing again his great faith, his wonderful, strong faith, which he had right throughout his 102 years. And we give thanks to God today for that wonderful faith and example to all of us. Catherine is going to bring up his prayer book and his office book again. You know, at the heart of his life was that belief and that faith and that trust in God. We can imagine, I suppose, today as he meets his Lord and Saviour after a lifetime of faithfulness and trust and the joy he'll have in that meeting of his Lord and Maker. We come here into the presence of the Lord. And so we're just going to begin our Mass today by pausing just for a few moments. We acknowledge that none of us are perfect. We're all in need of healing. We're all in need of God's forgiveness, compassion, and mercy in our lives. So we just pause for a moment or two as we call to mind those failings, and we ask for God's forgiveness. <coughs> You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Pat, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to listen to our readings, God's word of light, of hope to us, as we celebrate this funeral mass for Pat. So we'll have our first reading, whoever's reading our first reading, and then I think our psalm is being sung, and then we'll have our second reading. First reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense and it is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins but delights in the truth. It's always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, the Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. He does not treat us according to our sins, 
for repay us according to our faults. Response, the Lord, the Lord is compassion and love. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has pity on, of those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, he remembers that we are dust. Response, the Lord is compassion and love. As a man, his days are like grass. He flowers like the flower of the field. The wind blows and he is gone, and his place never sees him again. Response, the Lord is compassion and love. But the love of the Lord is everlasting upon those who fear him. His justice reaches out to children's children when they keep his covenant in truth. Response, the Lord, the Lord is compassion and love. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We should all have to stand before his judgment seat of God, as scripture says. Be my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honour him. The Gospel of the Lord. And again, you're very welcome uh, here this morning. There's a reflection that I came across which says the following. When a person reaches an advanced old age after having lived a full life, dying becomes almost as natural as the picking of a ripe apple the harvest has been gathered. The journey ended. The story told. Such a death is like the coming of sleep after a long and rewarding day's work. I love that reflection. It's very appropriate today as we gather to remember, to pray for, and to celebrate the life of Pat Phelan. So blessed in many, many ways, many years of life, 102 years old. And while there is, of course, and there's always sadness that he's leaving us, I hope there is also joy in knowing that 
Pat is now gone home. I often think when we gather to celebrate the funeral mass for a senior member of our community, it's so important that we owe so much to people like Pat and his generation, because he was born at a time of great change, not only in Ireland, the emerging free state, but also in the church in Ireland. It was certainly a different world than we find ourselves in here today. But Pat and people of his generation were very strong people, faithful people, who are not afraid of hard work. And we today, we don't always recognize this, but we today benefit from the commitment, the strength and dedication of Pat and others like him. We are who we are today. We have what we have today because of the generation who went before us. And today, in this quiet time of reflection, we say thank you to Pat for that. In the past few days, many people, of course, this is natural, have been speaking of Pat, recalling lovely stories of him. One thing that I've heard about him is that he was a very social person right throughout his life, who loved to meet people, to talk to people. Another lovely phrase I heard is that he was a gentleman through and through. Lovely words describing a man that would be so missed by so many people, but most especially, I think, by you, his family, because, of course, you were the most important people in his life. It doesn't matter the age. He was your dad, your granddad, your great-granddad, your brother. Age does not lessen those relationships. In fact, it makes them stronger. You will miss him. A constant presence in your lives for all of those years. But those years, of course, were a blessing. Look at all of the lovely memories and experiences you can look back on now and remember and hopefully smile at when you remember those things and experiences you shared together. Today, I suppose, as we come together here, we do two things for Pat. Firstly, we remember him. We all like to be remembered. No one wants to be forgotten, so we remember him. We celebrate his long life. We give thanks to God that Pat was blessed with such a loving family who loved and cared for him. We celebrate also all of the blessings that God gave him throughout his long life. We give thanks today also for his unique personality, the values, the example, the faith, and encouragement he brought into the lives of those who knew and loved him especially, again, his family. We celebrate today because you, his family, were blessed to have him for so long in your lives. And the second thing we do here today, and it's always so important, is that we pray for him. And I think that Pat would be the first to say that none of us are perfect. We all need prayers. And so today we pray for Pat, that after a long and good life, that God will grant him a place of rest and peace with him forever. We pray that with a smile on his face, that he will now be reunited
with all of those who have gone before him, his parents, his brothers and sisters, and especially his beloved wife, Bid. You can imagine the lovely reunion of all of them. We give thanks to God today for that. We pray that God will now richly reward this good man for his life of faithfulness, for his goodness and for his example. We take the opportunity again to thank Pat. We pray that the Lord will grant him eternal rest and peace in his love forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We all come here today with prayers in our heart, especially for Pat, but also for you, his family. So we gather all of those prayers here today in our prayer of the faithful. I invite those who are reading our prayers of the faithful to come forward now. I invite you to stand for our prayers. Trusting in God our Father, we now place before him all of our needs in our prayer of intercession, knowing that he is a loving God who always listens to and answers our prayers. We pray for all those who have cared and looked after Pat, especially the wonderful staff of St. Joseph Nursing Home and his GP, Dr. Tygo Carroll. We will be forever grateful for the love, care and compassion you have shown Pat and his family over his long, wonderful life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are sick, lonely or struggling in today's world. May they be strengthened by God's love and aided by their friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the gift of peace in our everyday lives, in our families and across all war-torn regions of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Pat's wife, Bid, and for all the faithfully departed members of Pat's family, may they see God face to face in the glory of God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of Pat, may they seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel their darkness that comes from grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We just take a moment ourselves in silence, in the silence of our hearts, to bring before the Lord any special prayers or intentions we carry in our hearts at this time. Lord, hear us. And these are our prayers, Father, the prayers of our hearts, spoken and unspoken. We make them to you through Christ our Lord. I invite you to be seated now and we'll have our offertory procession when the gifts of bread and wine will be brought to the altar for the celebration of the Eucharist.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Pat, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, Nile, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Pat, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that Pat, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up the flesh of those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, to Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. And now in confidence, we pray to God our Father, as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We just pause for a few moments in silence as we pray for that peace, for peace in our own lives, in our homes, in our families, in all of those areas of conflict in our world where people are suffering. And of course, we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine at this time. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
And let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it our brother Pat may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to the final part of our liturgy here today for Pat, the final commendation. And just before that, his brother Michael is going to share some words with us before the final commendation. <clears throat> Reverend fathers, family, extended family, friends and neighbours, Thank you all for coming to celebrate Pat's life and passing. Special word of thanks to Dr. Tyg O'Carroll, the Order of the Little Sisters, and all the staff of St. Joseph's Nursing Home for all the wonderful care and attention afforded Pat in his final years. I have been asked to telescope 102 years of Pat's life into a five-minute slot. <laughs> I will try. Every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Until now, this story appeared to have no end. As you know, Pat is the eldest of 11 children, and being the eldest carries with it great responsibilities. His responsibilities were to lead by example, to inspire and encourage the younger members of the family. This he did with quiet authority, respect, and integrity. 
He did it through his way of living, his lifestyle and commitment and perseverance to all the activities that attracted him. He began his career in his first job in Denny's Bacon Factory on Morgan Street and then went on to Clovermeets in Christendom Ferry Bank, where he stayed until the end of his working life. Pat pursued many interests and hobbies. He was a boxer. Just imagine Pat, a boxer. <laughs> I can't when I was there. <laughs> a woodworker, a gifted, talented man in his craft, a horseman. He even had a fence named after him in the paddock at the back of the dwelling house at home. It was called Pat's Jump. He was a magician and had performed on stage under the stage name Fellino. He also took part in the old time music hall with Dick Cullinan. He performed in Tops of the Towns. Many other charitable events. He was a member of the Magic Circle. He was a rowing man and won the Golf Shield in 1941. Racing. Pat's passion was horse racing. He went to Aintree in 1950 to see Free Boater win the Grand National. In 2015, Pat celebrated 87 unbroken years of attendance at Tremor races and was presented with an award to mark the occasion by the race course management. He was a fisherman. He was champion fisherman with the Dunmore East Angling Club, caught 42 bass and two skate in one outing in 1961. Pat was appointed by the Inland Fisheries Trust and Tourist Board to carry out a survey of fish stocks off Dunmore East to help promote sea angling as a tourist attraction. Pat was a founder member of Tremor Pitch and Putt Club and in golf. Pat took up golf at the age of 70. Like Pat's character and his lifestyle, always down the middle, you just didn't play this man for money. He played like a World War II veteran, <laughs> out in 39 and back in 45. <laughs> <laughs> he was a founder member of Waterworth Probus, and as from the 25th of January 2011, he was an honorary life member. He was a founder member of Waterworth Credit Union. He was awarded the service Noshunta Medal for his service with the Slu Mirror from 1939 to 1945, the war years. Slew were known as the Dryland Sailors. On the 16th of February 2000, he was awarded the Beramarenti Papal Medal for his 50 year service to the church in St. Vincent de Paul. Pat married his beautiful wife, Bid Brennan, in 1947 and has a wonderful family in Miriam, Catherine, Lupita, Frank, and John who are all a great credit to both of them. Whenever Pat was asked how many family, how many were in his family, he would always reply in poker parlance and say, a full house, <laughs> three queens and two jacks. <laughs> he was a true blue family man and a true friend to all who knew him. On the Phelan coat of arms, the motto reads, Torus Fortus Mehi Deus, which translate, God is a strong tower to me. Pat was a very religious man, and so this motto describes him perfectly, but I suspect he preferred winner all right. <laughs> I will finish with a quote from Robbie Burns. An honest man here lies at rest, ever God with his image blessed, the friend of man, friend of truth, friend of age and guide of youth, Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, few heads with knowledge so informed. If there's another world, he lives in bliss. If there is none, he may the best of this. Thank you all again for your support in celebrating Pat's life and passing. God bless, safe home. Thank you. Just on behalf of my generation and the community here at Sleeve Rue, just a few 
short thoughts about Pat. Um, when we grew up here in Sleeveru all those years ago, uh, we had no internet. We were lucky to have a television. Uh, most people only had a radio. So what did we do? How did we manage? Well, we had neighbours, and we spoke to our neighbours. And uh, some of our neighbours really were legends, and uh, we buried one of those last week, Mary Rocket, but uh, Pat Fielden was certainly one of them. And uh, Pat was, I suppose, one of the original influencers. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, you know, we had um, Catherine Hedburn and Humphrey Bogart, and we had Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, but we also had Bid Phelan and Pat Phelan. They were the most glamorous people in the village. And uh, I can still see, uh, we have some lovely photographs of them at the horse racing, and they're glammed up to the last. Uh, but they, I've never seen Pat without a shirt and tie. And I believe up to recently, he was still folding his clothes before he went to bed at night. I'm sure all the Phelans uh, have carried on that tradition as well. <laughs> But I remember, because Pat always gave us a sense of, well, he was a magician. And you know, when we came to the school parties here at school, Pat used to perform and do his magic tricks. And to see a rabbit being pulled out of a hat for the first time, that has a great effect on any young person. It gave us a great sense of amazement and wow. And also, my abiding, I suppose, memory of Pat is in St. Vincent de Paul. He was a great man for St. Vincent de Paul. And every year we had the Christmas raffle, and I can still see Pat spinning the wheel and hear the rattle of that wheel. I think that memory will always live with me. And that was just a great sign of, of Pat and you know, his influence he had on all our generation and all the young people in Sleeve Row. You know, we can't complain about anything. Pat had 103 great years and they were wonderful years. And we thank, as a community, we thank God for the gift of Pat and for all the wonderful memories we have of him. And we ask the Lord to grant him light, happiness and peace. Amen. 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 And thank you, Brian, for sharing those words with us today. And to Michael also for those lovely words uh, earlier. Thank you all for your presence. Again, the family and all appreciate your prayerfulness and your presence with them at this time. Thank you to, to all who took an active part in our liturgy here today, those who brought forward the symbols at the beginning, uh, the uh, readings, the prayers of the faithful, the offertory procession. Thank you also, especially to our singer and our musician up there. So thank you uh, to you also for adding so much to our liturgy here today. Thank you also to Mary Welch here in the church here in Sleeve Rue for setting up the church for us. And also to Thompson's undertakers I know you very much appreciate their professionalism at this time. And so we come to the final part of our liturgy, the final commendation. I invite you to stand for this part of our liturgy. <laughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Pat, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Pat again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. So we just pause for a few moments in silence. Uh, we sprinkle Pat with some holy water, reminding us of his great faith, which began on the day of his baptism. We also incense him with the thurible, again reminding us of the central belief of our faith, that Pat was created by God, loved by God, and today we believe he returns home to God. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto Pat, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Pat and assure in certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Pat in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Pat forever. Amen. And now in peace, let us take Pat to his place of rest.
keep my father all the world's father. That's when he was walking to heal his, his glory about this. I wish any generation all the time had to tell you guys. Yeah. That generation. Yeah. Can you announce the Granville father? The Granville family you'd like to invite father. everyone yeah. back. Yeah, very special. Our brother Pat has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Pat. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. And we read in sacred scripture, Come you whom my Father has blessed, says the Lord, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless this grave and send your holy angel to watch over it. As we bury here the body of our brother, deliver his soul from every bond of sin, that he may rejoice in you with your saints forever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call Pat from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend Pat to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. Dear friends, in reverence, let us pray to God, the source of all mercies. You raise the dead to life, give to Pat eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to those who mourn for Pat and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Pat. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who are buried here in this cemetery. May their suffering be lessened. May their joy be increased. May the light of glory shine on them and may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And with longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds, and by whose hand the dead are raised again, though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer in sadness for your servant, Pat. Deliver his soul from death. Number him among your saints, and clothe him with the robe of salvation to enjoy forever the delights of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now Father Brian will offer up one decade of the rosary for the happy repose of Pat's soul. And we offer the first glorious mystery, that of the resurrection for the repose of Pat's soul. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for <coughs> us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Pat, O Lord. May your petrol light shine upon him, and may he rest in peace. Amen. And may the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, help those who mourn for Pat, and accompany all of us in our time of need. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May your petrol light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through, through the, the mercy, mercy of God, God rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. And again, the family very much appreciate your presence with them here today. They've asked me to let you know that immediately after the burial here now, there will be refreshments available in the Granville Hotel, and you're very welcome to come with them and to join with them for those refreshments in the Granville Hotel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.